Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here. Now, you know, it's get, been kind of a bad week for Bitcoin <laughs> and the cryptocurrencies. I've been through all this before a number of times. This is what Bitcoin does. And, you know, I mean, uh, the way I see it, here, here, this is the way I see it. The lower it goes on this end, the higher it's going to go on the other end, you know. Don't let them shake you out of the tree. This is what they're doing right now. I've seen this before. You do not take a loss unless you sell at these lower prices. That's as soon as you sell, that's when you take your loss. Because it's going to go up on the other side. Listen, we are an army. We are an army of HODLers. H-O-D-L. Hang in there, guys. Hang in there. And, you know, we've got real turbulence coming up ahead in the financial system in this next month. This next month is actually going to be exciting. And we've had a new thing happen recently. It's come out of nowhere. It's like a black swan. And it's called Ukraine Phone Call. E.T. phone home. <laughs> you know, it's come out of nowhere. Honest to gosh, this situation. And it's escalating. It's escalating. It's getting worse. You know? I heard today in one of the articles. Now, I've done some clear research into this, guys. And first, it goes. it's going to go through the house. That's where it's going to go first. It's the house. And the House is controlled mostly with Democrats. Then next has to go through the Senate. Now, I this situation's getting worse. It's escalating. It's, it's not getting better. And I heard today that as many as 35 Republican senators might... I mean, this whole thing. We don't know where this is going to go at this point. Let me tell you guys about court and about the law system that we have out there. Never take it for granted. When you go to court, you might be innocent, totally innocent. And you think to yourself, hey, you know, this is going to be a cakewalk because I'm innocent. And you know you're innocent. When you go to court, you never know how it's going to swing. Many a many a man has walked into a court that's totally innocent and walked out with a guilty verdict. And many times, a guilty guy, guilty as sin has went in there and walked out free. This is the way it works. This is the way the system works. We think it works good. It doesn't. The whole system, every inch of it, is, is permeated with, with, with people that are on the take. This is why the, the financial system's going down in the first place. So... Here we have Bitcoin. We got this turbulent time coming. This is going to add more turmoil to an, what was already going to be a turbulent month. And to top it off, the icing on the cake of everything. At the end of the month, the 31st of October, it looking more and more like we're going to have a hard Brexit. And you know, that's going to drag Germany and the United Kingdom into a recession. These are two huge economies. Well, well what's going to happen with Italy? When, when when those two economies roll over into a recession, you know, Italy is like just absolutely enormous, the problems in the Italian banking system and everything else. And they've been just barely keeping that country afloat, the whole country. And it's a huge economy. And guess what? France has lent a lot of money to Italy, more money than they can afford to lend to Italy. Something like 260 billion euros that France has borrowed Italy. And if France can't get that 260 billion euros back, and the only way they're going to get it back is if Italy stays solvent. So can you see this? It's like dominoes that are all stacked up. Everybody out there right now thinks that the financial system is just fine. I think everything's fine. And they're all in their mutual funds and everything else, and their money market accounts and everything else. They never read the small print. What you don't realize is that all of this stuff has counterparty risk, and if the system starts to fold down and melt, 
well, you could lose a huge chunk of your of your of your of what you have. And at the same time, you know if it all folds down to melt that the central banks are going to step in and print like mad. So here you are on one end, say you got a money market account or something and the system starts to melt down and they chop they chop you. They 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 take a whole bunch of money from you from your money market account. And then to add, to add insult to injury, the Fed comes along then and prints a whole bunch of new money and inflation chops away at the rest of it. And what are you left with? You need to get into assets that don't have any counterparty risk. And what that basically means is if you don't hold it, you don't own it. you got to hold it in your hand. You say, well, how can I hold cryptocurrencies? You hold them by keeping the private keys in your own possession. It's the same thing as when you buy gold and silver and they deliver it and you put it in your hand. It's yours and you own it. You fold, you fold your tight little wrist around it. And in this kind of society that we have right now, you better, ha you better have white knuckles clinched around whatever you own. Because we're living in a world right now where it's awful going to be awful hard to make it through with anything on the other side. And do you know how many homeless people there's going to be? This situation that they're, that they're causing right now is going to explode. The amount, of, the amount of homeless people out there is just going to be tidal waves of them. It's going to be incredible. An incredible situation, an incredible time we're living through. And so let's take a look at this article. Let's start the charts right here and take a look at this article. Uh, this week in crypto. Bitcoin crashes 20%, dragging down the other coins with it. They're calling it crypto craze. You know, it's, it's not. that's like it's a fad. It's not a fad. It's not going to go away. We've seen all this before. One of the worst crashes that I ever seen was caused by the People's Bank of China. And quite literally, I mean, it was like Bitcoin was riding high up like $1,150 and they smashed it all the way down, 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 down to like 140 bucks. You know, now that's a big crash. If you were to compare that to where it was at nearly 20000 down to where it is now, that would take us an awful lot lower, you know, the, the equal amount, you know, to from, from 1150 down to 140. Uh, what's that about? Uh, almost uh, one tenth of the price it was. So if we were up at 20,000, then uh, one tenth of 20,000 would be 2,000 bucks. So so it have it would have to go down to about 2,500 bucks to equal that other crash. And I lived through that crash. And I made the big mistake at the bottom. At the very bottom is when I sold. And I didn't actually sell them. I traded them for, for Litecoin. I had a couple of Bitcoins. And you know, I've never been able to get a Bitcoin back. I don't have a whole Bitcoin. I got fragments, you know. But I've never been able to get back to where I was. And like, it's just like uh, one of those things, you know, where you've made a mistake and, and there's no going back. Because I can't afford to go back. And that's all my mistake of, of thinking that Bitcoin was going to actually die. Well, these guys that preaching Bitcoin's death are still out there right now, and there are probably just as many of them as there ever was. Don't listen to those guys. You'll get shaken out of your tree. You'll get shaken out of your position. And maybe five years from now, you will be crying about it. You know? And so, I mean, this is the way it's going to go because Bitcoin's actually growing. You know, guys, it's actually growing even though, uh, even though uh, that we've had a bad week. This week in crypto, Bitcoin crashes 20%. Do not get discouraged, guys. That's what I'm going to tell you. Don't get discouraged. We're going to start moving up after a while. Uh, the lower we go, the more likely it is we're going to move up. <laughs> and the better buying opportunity it creates for creates for you. You got to think in that kind of logic. Hang on to what you got and if if it gets really low to a price where you look at it and you say, oh boy, maybe you can afford to go and get a little bit more. 
And then later the price will start to go back up. I don't know how exactly how low it'll go. I thought there was a floor at eight thousand dollars. We'll see if that floor I, I put on it holds at eight thousand. But uh, with cryptocurrency, you just can't come along and arbitrarily say, "Okay, you're going to stop at eight thousand dollars and not go any lower." It could go a bit lower, but the lower it goes, the higher it's going to climb on the other side. Listen, thank you guys for listening to this report. And we'll catch you guys again very, very soon. Uh, uh, probably do a show this weekend. Uh, especially do a show if we see Bitcoin starting to go back up again a little bit. You know? Uh, <laughs> give me a thumbs up, guys. Bye-bye.